Hello and welcome to another episode in our Whole Design 101 series and today we're going to be looking at this showstopper short par 3 and ways in which you can make this whole play interestingly as well as take advantage of probably one of the best sites on your plot. Now by short par 3 we're going to define that as you've got wedge in hand pretty much so sub 140 maybe even sub 130 yards and there's a couple of keys to making this whole design really pop but in reality the main one is pick out a really good site for the hole first of all. So we're going to leap into this and look at a couple of different examples and what makes those holes really shine. So the first aspect of this hole is green site and it's probably the most important one. And you should have had an eye on a corner of your property or an area for this hole from the very start. There should be a clear spotlight hole or an area where you're desperately drawing people's attention towards. Here we're flying over Whiskey Ranch and you can see that, that lone sycamore has been drawing our attention to this spot for miles, highlighting this green and raising our anticipation. It's got that prime location, so coinciding with Risky Run's fourth over on the right hand side and featuring that cliff top green site that's just a perfect spot for this sort of hole. The other thing that is worth bearing in mind, if we zoom back, look how far off and from how many holes you're going to be able to see this in the routing. So that tree is just drawing our attention. You've got to be thinking, I really want to get to that point and hit that shot. It's got to be teasing you almost. So if you look, you can see that because of the absence of and just the open space. You only able to see that from pretty much approach shot from the first green. I think this one was 12 and this one's 3. He changed the routing right before the end, I think so. Then you're coming in through, I think, 13. You hit down here and here and then you finally get to that 14th so there's a lot of layering going on and I know he works really hard at making sure you've got one green kind of over and then the second one following on from behind that okay and we're now leaping over to whiskey trails and you've got another super short par 3 and this one just blows my mind every time I play it we started this course something like seven months ago and Energizer who built this course Jason had earmarked this green site way off in advance. We tweaked a few things, but this was one where he knew he was going to have this big view over everywhere else, and it was just a spot where a green had to sit. And you can see he's even put a little bench there so that you could take a little break and look over the rest of the resort, which is a cool touch. Um, but again, look at the big view doing everything for, not everything for him, but it fills the space. This green had to go here. And I guess that's the main thing we'd talk about first of all find a really nice natural green site make sure that it's a prime focal point on your land and it's just going to be a hole that blows everyone away um, and he actually had two of them the other one just over here another short little par three doing a similar thing overlooking down to the jeans course below just absolutely killer stuff here now with that in mind we're actually just going to sit and look at this shot for a second because the second major point with this one in a so first one your green site second one has to be your planting and just natural beauty of this hole so if you look and see every aspect of the frame is just drawing your eye towards the hole so there's some framing in that you've got different things of different depth guiding your eye towards the hole it all looks natural none of it looks forced but it's stunning to look at you've got the big view in the distance you could spend ages looking at this and looking at his planting was just the rest of us were just kind of marveling at this the whole time this course came together but any point you're on this core this hole you're going to get different views and you're going to be tempted just to sit and look around you because really whilst there is some strategy involved in a short par 3 the majority of it is visual so we've covered the beauty in the green site and again here we are at black salt valley's 15th and you can see that the green site's great it overlooks this little lake overlooks the next hole You've got this wonderful atmosphere that I always wanted to, I basically stole off Osei Country Club by Stay Puffed, um, of this little amphitheatre of the green. Everything's making it look menacing. I worked really hard to make sure you could see the water behind the green as well, so that scared you a little bit more. Big cavernous bunkers in front, because you've got Wedge or 9-iron in hand, usually. On the old game, you certainly did. So we've covered that, but playability-wise, what are your challenges with this? Well, your challenges really are to make accuracy at an absolute premium. Now, within your green, this one was quite a big green for this sort of shot, and Black Salt had some unique greens anyway. But you want to make the actual area for landing on 
really quite tight and put accuracy at an absolute premium. So if I'm trying to hit into this pin, well, with this green, Black Swords maybe not your best example, but it, it's kind of take everything here and tone it down by about 50%. This mound here is going to mean that if I'm hitting it dead on, I'm landing long. So really I was wanting to hit it about here in the old game where it was so easy to hit perfect at distance. I was trying to challenge people to hit it just here, roll it just down, and then end up there. I also tried to make it really nasty for people in that I would funnel you into areas where you'd have double breakers. So your ball would tend to roll down into here, and then you've got it breaking that way, and then at the pin it's breaking that way, and you've got this subtle slope coming in here as well. If you go long and left, well you're coming at the pup from this way and you're not making birdie. If you're short, you're definitely not making bogey and you're possibly free putting. So you're really trying to think about can I possibly land it long? Can I end up really your best chance at birdie is leaving it here? But then you're taking on this mound and so what I'm saying really with this one is can you use your internal contouring to make the pin positions really matter you don't need to go super severe with it definitely don't go as severe as this one but I thought it was a good example so if we were hitting a shot into this <laughs> not sure I really want to I'm between clubs as well let's put some loft on probably a bit more loft on and we'll see how that ends up it's going to hit about where I want it to and funnels off just down there and even then we've got a pretty tricky putt for birdie and that's about as good a shot as I can hit so you've got to really put the pressure on accuracy now I know it's all very well saying put the pressure on accuracy put a premium on it make it matter but how do you actually go about doing that so I wanted to give a few tips on how I go about doing greens I've done a more in-depth tutorial on this in 19 but I'll, do, I'll touch on bits here for me it's I see a lot of people just try to put premium on accuracy by just going well we're going to have a tier here and maybe a tier I don't know front or something like that or a false front here and that's fine but it's pretty one dimensional if we're honest because you either hit that distance and or you don't and you're putting up a slope or you're not or you're on the level I think that does work and there's a place for it short par threes can be a decent place for a tier but I think more often than not tiers are designed to challenge club selection. They work better with longer approaches I find because you can actually try to ask people questions of rolling the ball up them. With a wedge you've either hit it or you've not or you're potentially spinning back down. That's not really how I'd like to do it. So what I want to talk about a little bit more here is internal contouring. So can we use things like spines? So a spine would be a little raised portion of the green that's going to deflect the ball both ways. The beauty of these, so if we just draw some arrows for you, is that based on your shot they can kind of help or hinder for this pin well I want to be I can use that spine as a bit of a backstop and I'm putting down it or because of this one being so subtle I don't really want to stop the ball there because I've got a nasty little downhill putt to a pin that runs away whereas if I just feed it slightly over great for this pin position so imagine if I put a pin here well then we're asking the player how close to that spine do you want to play within this with a tier, you basically limit yourself to a couple of pin positions. With spines and internal contours, you actually give, like this pin is going to play really different to this pin. And you give yourself a bit more variety. Um, you've got it as a backstop here. Other things that you can do, let's imagine we bring this bunker in to the green just about here. Let's say we raise that up a little bit more. Now suddenly that's adding a few more contours that make life a little bit more interesting. Now with this pin, again, maybe you now want to try a fade a little bit more because that slope's going to stop you if it's ball's working in that way. Whereas if you're drawing it, it's running out and rolling away a little bit more. We've made this into kind of a bit more of a tiered section, which is why I didn't do this. I didn't mount that area of the green up because actually I wanted you to be able to kind of roll the ball down relatively gently but not make it too severe. Other things you can do, let's take that same mound idea. Well, let's imagine we have this little, now this is going to be very severe but bear with me. Let's imagine we had a little mound there. 
you see these on uh, Crystal Downs was the famous one for these, the little Maxwell muffins or rolls as they're referred to. If you're putting a pin there, there, there or there and you've got a little mound that everything's breaking away from, I'd make it pretty subtle but each of those pins takes on a slightly different dynamic just by that one little roll. We can do the same um, with really your spines as well we could create I could have pushed the green back a little bit further and created a pin up here there's all sorts of variety within how you do greens but really think about not just using tiers also consider having kind of let's see this slope at the moment it's pretty it, not one dimensional but it's quite a hard slope in that you've got this back it's acting purely as a backstop what if we actually soften that a touch? So I'm going to raise the bottom of the slope just by a couple of inches at, around the base. And what you'll see that do, do it once more, that turns this into a faster, more gradual slope. Now if I then lower the top a little bit more, Well, suddenly this pin takes on a different dynamic because I can't use this as a backstop anymore but it is going to be nasty if I leave a putt up here and I'm putting down to there I've got a real risk of running off left or right of the, or far off the green so do consider that in this game the joy that we've got is that we're no longer constrained to green yellow red slopes you've got all of these nuances in between and the ball will stop them pretty much anything other than red. I mean you could put a pin on an orange slope, I would really advise you not to, but that doesn't mean to say that they can't come into play closer to the pin than they used to. Um, so really consider the ver variety of your greens and how you're going to make different pins play the same, play differently. Um, now that we've got the full green grid as well, and I've covered this in other videos, do it's easier to consider your green as a whole. If you've got one slope, so I originally put in this spine, and this spine. Look at those slopes. Think about if you put a pin there, how's that slope interacting? And then if you also put a pin here, is it interacting slightly differently? Think about where you want your pins in relation to the whole green. But in terms of making accuracy matter, your green's going to come into play and you can ramp up the slopes on a short path three green in a way that you just can't on pretty much any other hole. The final major area that I would want to discuss with a short par 3 is that you want to have danger in play wherever you possibly can. If you think of some of the really famous short par 3s, True in the Postage Stamp, Augusta 12th, uh, Sawgrass 17, you've got a lot of them. You're always going to think about the misses that are in play. Um, think about Spieth's Meltdown in the Masters, think about everyone you've ever seen dunk it in the water on Sawgrass 17, Postage Stamp to actually played relatively easily, but you want some sort of big hazard in around them if you possibly can manage. Now with this one you've got the ocean lurking, you've got bunkers short, particularly when you tuck the pin right at the back there's like even if it plays a little easier than it looks it's gonna be something that you're aware of. You do want to allow birdie if they hit the ball pretty close. So this pin for example if you're landing kind of anywhere within like five uh, five feet long or left you're going to end up with a pretty easy birdie putt if you're ending up short and right you're going to end up with a relatively makeable birdie putt as well so don't do not try to protect par on these holes at all costs because you won't but equally you can see from the green slopes in on around here there's a lot of red like this one is you have 108 yards 105 yards you should be hitting the green and you should be hitting a really close approach so that's really it for this tutorial. It's quite, I want to say it's quite straightforward, but in reality, your short par threes have to be something that you've seen coming from a long way off. Um, if you look at Greenstone 8, it's there's a few things I'd change. It's a little rough around the edges of the sculpting, but you see it coming off the seventh. You've got this overlook that we talked about with Whiskey Ranch as well. It's on a por portion of land that you would move heaven and earth to put a green on a green side like that. And so let's make the absolute most of it. Let's have that one shot hole where if you think about a par three, your joy of it is that you are putting everyone standing on exactly the same spot. 
you frame that view exactly how you want to. There's no tee shots going 30 yards left, 30 shots yards right. You are telling people they are hitting from here. So you can make that view everything you want it to be. So that's our video on the short par 3. I hope that some of these insights have helped and that give you a good idea of how you might want to make this hole firstly beautiful and strategic and also show it off as much as possible because it should be a real standout moment on your course. Um, thank you very much for watching and see you soon.